What's cracking big? Oh, welcome bike to the channel. Welcome bike to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football. A Saturday night. Can't show some respect to us. Right here trying to have a good time. And they dropping shit on us like a pigeon. It was late. And I was like, I'll handle this shit in the morning. So we got a little swap. We got a little quarterback swap. Possibly the first of many this offseason. There's going to be a lot of movement at the quarterback position. So we've got Matt Stafford heading to the Rams. Jared Goff, two future first round picks. A third round pick this year going to the Lions. The Lions obviously have to eat up that Jared Goff contract. It's a horrid contract with a lot of money, but they said, fuck it. We'll take it on. We'll eat it. We're a young team. Jared Goff's still 26 years old. We'll let him play out his contract here and see what we got. You know, if he plays well, if he surprises us, maybe he's our guy. Maybe not. This puts him in a, in a little bit of a, an odd position because... Stafford was out of there regardless, right? So they were fielding offers. And some people, you know, you look at the trader initially and and you see an overwhelming majority of people saying, holy shit, like look what the Lions got for a piece that, you know, Stafford's a 33, 34-year-old quarterback. He's dealt with injuries each of the last like four years, three years consecutively. Is he out of his prime? Maybe, maybe not. But he's probably the missing piece of the Rams offense. At least the quarterback was. You also have to look at the landscape overall when you look at how this trade kind of played out and the amount of stuff that the Lions got in return for Matt Stafford. I think one of the big pieces of this and just the, the sheer quantity and volume of, of the assets that they got in return, of course, one was to get the money off the books from the Rams from Goff's contract, but they still do get a pretty heavy dead cap hit to them this year, is the fact that like I, th I think people are probably overestimating the quarterback market right now. Like I think people are assuming that all of these quarterbacks are on the trade market. Like Carson Wentz is on the move. Deshaun Watson is on the move. And, you know, it, it could happen, but I think more people are in the mindset that it's going to happen than that it might happen, that it's a possibility. Like Deshaun Watson, like you don't, he's a top five quarterback in the league. Just because he's starting to complain and asking for a trade offer does not mean that the Texans are going to grant him that. They have the contractual rights to keep Deshaun Watson. He might even fucking hold out this year. I don't know. Things can get a little bit wild over there, but he is not in power. He does not have the leverage over this team. Same with like Carson Wentz puts them in a terrible spot with the contract. It's going to be very, very difficult for the Eagles to move. So as fun as it is to talk about it and pretend that every fucking rookie is going to the Chiefs this year. I know Najee Harris is going to the Chiefs. Jamar Chase is going to the Chiefs. Devontae Smith, they're all going to the Chiefs. I get it. This is like what y'all do with the quarterbacks as well. Not everybody can move to every team that you want them to. The real realistic point of this is that a lot of these quarterbacks are not going to move, which means Matt Stafford was the one concrete quarterback that we knew for sure was actually going to be traded. Thus, his market inflates. If the Lions are going around calling all of these teams, they're calling the Eagles, they're calling the Texans, and these other teams are saying, you know what, these guys are really not on the trade block, or you need to offer us something absurd, that puts them out of the running. And they say, okay, well, we need to get Stafford because supply and demand, tactics, this is how this shit works, okay? One overarching point I want to just throw in here quickly is the fact that I think a lot of you guys are overestimating the actual depth of the trade market for quarterbacks this offseason. So I, again, I, I said this about a month ago, when I started off my quarterback free agency video, Wentz was not moving. I don't think Wentz moves. And since we've seen that video drop and they got rid of Doug Peterson, like there's no way Wentz is moving. There's a very real possibility that Deshaun Watson is not moving. But let's talk about the actual impact of the trade. So we have Jared Goff going over to the Lions. What does it mean for all the fantasy players around them? What does it mean for DeAndre Swift? It's not terrible because we're initially thinking like, I'd rather have Jared Goff there than like Trey Lance, a rookie quarterback, right? Because the Lions have the seventh overall pick and now they don't have to spend that pick on a quarterback. I doubt they will do that. I'm assuming they're going to use it on like a wide receiver because Kenny Galladay is also a free agent. So with a guy like DeAndre Swift, it's like, okay, would I rather have had a rookie quarterback under center for him? No. I'd rather have Jared Goff, who's been in the league, who's had 4,000-yard passing seasons, who can conduct an offense. I don't think Jared Goff is that bad either. He's in that pack of middle quarterbacks from like quarterback 10 up to quarterback 24, where none of them are elite arm throwers. None of them add a crazy amount of rushing upside. None of them are guys that will separate themselves through pure talent, right? He's just in that zone where he'll have good games and then he'll have bad games. And then fantasy Twitter will be like, he doesn't deserve, deserve to be a starting quarterback in the NFL when that's completely wrong, right? It's in that mold of like the Kirk Cousins. It's in that mold of the Derek Cars. It's in the, it's in the mold of all of those guys where you're just going to get inconsistent and consistent play. Sometimes, other times, not so much, okay? That's the first thing with Goff. Is he an NFL quarterback? Yes, absolutely. Former number one overall pick. With Swift, right, they've got the new head coaching staff coming in, Dan Campbell, we're eating fucking knees and, and whatever he's talking about over there. But they're talking about using DeAndre Swift more in the slot. You know, AP's about to be in jail for fucking tax fraud, tax evasion. I need to hit up whoever put him on that plan because I would love to get involved. He's probably going to be gone which leaves most of this backfield open for DeAndre Swift. They're going to have him running pass routes. I'm feeling pretty good about DeAndre Swift. His outcome does not change in my mind based on this trade. I don't think Stafford was like a fucking world beater. I don't think he was like an elite quarterback. I think his best days were probably behind him if he were to have stayed in a Detroit 
Lions uniform. DeAndre Swift continues to be, in my mind, one of the highest upside running backs going into next year. He'll probably be drafted late second, early third. He'll probably be drafted as a high-end RB2, and I think he has legitimate RB1 upside. In Dynasty, of course, he's an RB1. He's a top 15 pick, and this won't change that for me. Galladay is a free agent, so he can go elsewhere, but they can also franchise tag him. I think that's a that's in the possibility. That's in the cards. It kind of felt like Galladay was looking to get out or get a huge contract, regardless of whether or not Stafford was there. I'm assuming, you know, if he wanted to stay for Stafford and then Stafford announced that he wants to be moved or the team knows that Stafford's going to be on the move, uh, that would obviously dictate that Kenny Galladay wouldn't want to stay there. Maybe Jared Goff coming in does put his mind at ease a little bit and gets him back into the Detroit Lions situation contract-wise. If Galladay moves, though, now with Jared Goff coming in, I'd be a little bit a little bit more hesitant with DeAndre Swift because they don't have any playmakers on that offense outside of Galladay, Swift, and TJ Hawkinson. And TJ Hawkinson ain't going to be the one to keep eight, eight-man eight stack boxes uh, away from DeAndre Swift. So it could be a shit show in Detroit. Like their range of outcomes, I think, right now, they very well could end up being like a four to five win team next year. With Jared Goff there, if Kenny Galladay stays, I think... I think he's probably got a similar outlook to how we expected him to come into this year. Maybe a little bit of a downgrade. Marvin Jones will probably be out of there. So we can look at Kenny Galladay as a high-end wide receiver too. Again, he's probably going to get a little bit more inconsistent quarterback play than he would have at Stafford's behest. So let's flip over to the Rams side of the ball. The Rams side of the ball gets interesting because, I mean, they, they have a great defense. They have a great overall team outside of the quarterback position. I don't know what happened with McVay and Goff, but I think you kind of saw it in how the play calling came out last year. Like they went, they started to go really, 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 really run heavy. Like Akers was getting work on work on work on work. And it started to feel like they were forcing the issue almost to a point where they had no trust in Goff. And you could see that. With Stafford coming in, I mean, this tells you that they have the Super Bowl run in mind for the next two years. They clearly like Stafford given what they gave up to get him. What does this mean for Woods and Cup? Here's the thing. Like I don't, statistically speaking, that's what we're talking about for fantasy football. Like yes, great move for the Rams if all things else aside, like the salary cap doesn't even really fucking exist. They give up their first round picks we literally might see another pandemic happen before the rams next first round pick in an nfl draft so the big questions become what happens with woods what happens with cooper cup what happens with cam Akers? i do think this actually lends itself to being more pass heavy I, like statistically i, I don't think stafford is going to be putting up 4800 yards while goff was putting up 4000 or 4100 right I, I don't think the the gap in terms of statistics is going to be that wide i do think they probably present more scoring opportunities like goff was a guy who was putting up big numbers in the beginning of his career and then those touchdown numbers started to drop like he was at like 20 to 25 the last couple of years and that's where we saw the inconsistencies with robert woods remember like robert woods two years ago sc- scored three touchdowns cooper up this year scored three touchdowns so that number will probably bounce back up a little bit that's good for those receivers obviously with Stafford under center I don't think the upside of what people are pretending to make this out to be with Woods and Cooper Cup is going to be that crazy like I'm not all of a sudden drafting them again as wide receiver ones they're just going to be consistent wide receiver twos so for like dynasty values again wide receiver twos like middling wide receiver twos don't have a ton of value because the replacement level guys are not that hard to pick up they're not that hard to get so I had someone ask me this morning on Patreon, but what is Cooper Cup's value in dynasty now? Is it a late first round pick? And I said, I'll probably take almost any first round pick this year in a rookie draft over Cooper Cup maybe up until like the 111 or the 112 because you look at this year's rookie class and you're looking at first of all you've got Kyle Pitt so you've got a secure tight end in the first round you've got if you're in a super flex which I assume most of you play dynasty super flex leagues you got at least three if not four quarterbacks going in the top 12 Lawrence you've got Fields you probably got Zach Wilson probably also have Trey Lance because he's going to get hyped up enough to probably be a first round pick and then there's a possibility that four to five quarterbacks go in the first round then you have Najee Harris of course you've got Travis Etienne you've got Javante Williams and then you've got a six 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 class of wide receivers this reminds me a lot of last year where it feels like if you had a first round pick it was almost like a can't miss pick right look I mean look back at last year it was Burrow it was Herbert Tua it was Akers Swift Dobbins Taylor CEA like almost you know every wide receiver Justin Jefferson CeeDee Lamb like if you made a first round pick last year outside of like one or two guys you probably hit on that pick and that feels a lot like this year now the overall class once we get down to like the second round third round doesn't feel as deep as it did last year but the upper echelon tier not at the running back position in particular but the overall class feels really nice so when we're looking at Cooper Cup we're looking at Robert Woods I'm not so eager to give up a first round pick to get those guys I don't think the value from Stafford is that big of a boost to them for season long I mean again they're probably both going to be like the middling wide receiver twos that they've been that don't have a ton a ton of upside it gives them a little bit more consistency at the quarterback play I do think this means that they'll lend themselves to throwing the ball a little bit more because McVay probably trusts Matt Stafford a little bit more what does it mean for Akers I think he's the workhorse we're ready to go we know that shit it doesn't matter who's under center there again will lend itself to a little bit more passing work but Akers is a good pass catcher so even if he gets a few less carries than we saw down the stretch where he was averaging like 22 to 25 carries a game which is absurd we love to see that and I expect that to be the case next year almost like primo fucking girly three or four years ago I expect more passing work at Acres. I'm excited to see 
him next year with Safford under center. This team's going to be really good. They're uh, they're an automatic Super Bowl contender. Do I think it puts them over the top? Are they going to be a team like the Chiefs? I fucking doubt it. But overall, yeah, I, I would say that it's it's a good trade on paper for both sides. Both sides needed exactly. This is like this is like a fair trade. You know, this is what I tell people in dynasty leagues. The best time to trade is probably when you're nearing the actual playoffs, when you know which teams are getting in, which teams aren't getting in. One team needs a, a veteran player that pushes them over the top. The other team is rebuilding, so they get a future pick or something like that, and both teams win. It's not people trying to fucking finagle each other, and that's kind of what happened here. So the Rams get their their stud at quarterback, which can push them over the edge. I think Matt Stafford still probably profiles as like a maybe a top 12 guy like borderline top 12 in fantasy for like redraft leagues next year goff will probably be like a a mid to low end quarterback too i do think he's still got a little bit of value left because again he's still very young and people are so quick to write him off like he's done going to detroit is obviously a big detriment or a big hit to his value but this is a team again that i think in the range of outcomes for what they do next year could be could be a four to five win season, which means they're going to be throwing the ball a lot. And if they can get Kenny Galladay, like things could change really quickly for Jared Goff. Like their offensive line, one is not that bad. If Kenny Galladay resigns or gets hit with a franchise tag and then they draft a, a really good wide receiver at seven, you could be looking at a pretty good offense. You can be looking at uh, DeAndre Swift. You can be looking at TJ Hawkinson, Kenny Galladay, Devonta Smith, Jamar Chase, like one of those guys, even Jalen Waddle, whatever, one of those guys that goes in the top 10. And all of a sudden, Jared Goff is like a nice group of weapons there. The obvious upgrade for Stafford, he's been, he's, he's played with pretty good weapons up to this point in his career but the coaching move the coaching change right he's been playing under shitty shitty quarterback or shitty shitty coaches head coaches and just offensive schemes and stuff and uh McVay is obviously very good at utilizing the weapons that he has and putting them in the in the position to succeed and when he trusts the quarterback he lets it rip when he thinks the running backs are the key of their offense he lets them rip and I think clearly given the draft capital that they gave up for Stafford seems like they're going to base that offense around him so overall impact Matt Stafford I think his value probably stays the same for fantasy Jared Goff's also stays the same Lions players relative to what we thought was going to happen because Stafford was going to leave obviously gets a little bit of a boost I don't I'm not going to go out on a, I'm not going to go crazy and being like this is such a big upgrade for anyone here in the Lions situation uh for the Rams I really like I, I think just keeping a, a level head on this trade this is probably more exciting from an NFL standpoint than a fantasy standpoint Point. I don't think there's a huge amount of impact when we're looking at dynasty and, and redraft ADP next year. So let me let me know what y'all think about the trade. Let me know who you think won the trade. Let me know whose value you think gets hit or takes the biggest boost up based on the trade. And uh, I'll see y'all later on this week whenever I drop the next video. We're going top five rookies, top five rookie running backs in this class, either Tuesday or Thursday. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're covering everything fantasy and NFL for the rest of our lives. Love y'all. Bye. Hey!